Hey keys, Emily Valskin here. Today we're going to talk about a type of Polska that is not the most common type, but it is pretty interesting and important if you're playing nickel harpa because it's tightly linked to this history of this instrument. And this type of Polska is Bond Polska. Swedish means a farmer. So the Bond Polska is the Polska of the farmer. So this name is very self-explanatory about how Bond Polskas actually sound like. They are very heavy, they come from the countryside and you can imagine farmers with like clogs or big shoes, heavy shoes and maybe heavy clothes as well and maybe also not so good floors for dancing so they need a lot of energy and it's kind of rough and it's strong and it's very very energetic so they can manage to actually dance around and do the turns of the polskas even with their heavy clothes and their bad floors and maybe their heavy shoes as well and if you have this image in mind you can understand the music of bon polska which is extremely heavy and energetic keep that in mind and if you ever had this cliche of the swedish folk music being something light and delicate and elegant, well, maybe it's true for some slang polskas and other tunes, but for bon polska you really have to ditch it, because we are not at all in this kind of music for now. I have to here add a little disclaimer, I am not the biggest specialist of bon polska at all, it's not a repertoire that I play a lot actually, but I still like it and it's a very important part of the Nikol Harpa traditional repertoire, so I thought it was important to talk about it, even if it's not what you're going to play the most maybe, it's not what I play the most, but I still consider it important and I wanted to talk about it. So if you have very nerdy questions about Bon Polska in particular, you can try to ask me, but I'm not sure I will be able to answer, I have not digged very much into this repertoire yet. Um, what you can do, and this is valid for all types of repertoires actually, especially if you have very traditional and nerdy questions about one, it is to check the list of the people who got the Zorn Merkat, so the Zorn Medal, which is a medal that like, is given to those who are considered the best players in a tradition, a specific tradition in Sweden. So you have some for different regions and you have some for Uppland. And why Uppland? Because that's the region where Bon Polska comes from. I hope you know that because I've been having my map all the time and talking to you about different regions. Uppland is the region north of Stockholm where you find also the city of Uppsala, which is quite famous. And this is the region where the Nikol Harpa stayed alive in Sweden and was developed actually from like the old instruments to the modern chromatic Nikol Harpa as well. So uh, Bon Polska is a type of Polska, so the tunes in 3-4, that is typical for Uppland. It was played a lot on nickel harpas and especially on old forms of nickel harpa, like Silva Bas Harpa, Contra Bas Harpa and so on. But of course it was also played on other instruments, obviously fiddles and also others. So what I'm gonna talk about today is mostly a lot of bowing stuff. But if you play another kind of instrument, just adapt, like accordion, guitar, or flute, or whatever. If you play nickel harpa, I think it's an important part of the history of the instrument, Bon Polska. Even if it's not your favorite repertoire, it's interesting to play it to see where the instrument comes from, basically. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips uh, for how to play a Bon Polska that is really danceable. The thing that is a bit weird about Bon Polska is that it's a bit in between the branch of the straight polskas, the regular polskas, so 16th note polskas or triplet polskas, slang polskas and so on, and the short first beat polskas, Vermland polska, Spring Leak, Buda polska and so on. It's like actually Hambo, Hambo is the same own branch in a way, those are the tunes that are a bit navigating in between those two main families. Why is that? because Bon Polska has this particularity to not have a fixed pattern for its beat, where the beats are. You have three beats, you have a bar that is of a certain length that doesn't vary much, you should not stress it out, you should not elongate a bar, but the beats can happen not exactly at the same time every bar. 
which makes it quite unique in the whole Swedish repertoire. You have other types of polskas and other tunes that are not fully straight and that can vary. But that's the only one that varies as much, I think. Humble being very close as well. I'm gonna talk about humble in another video, but for now let's focus on Bon Polska. Usually the first beat will be quite at its normal place. The second beat is gonna be usually a bit early, not always. Navigating between early and normal regular, sometimes late but very rare. And the third beat is gonna be usually at its place but sometimes a bit early as well. And when each of these patterns happens, depends on you, the player. It's not fixed in a melody, sometimes it's more or less a melody is played more or less like that traditionally, but you can always elongate or shorten some of the beats because that's your taste, that's your style. So it's a very free rhythmical pattern, if you want. It's maybe the freest that exists in Sweden from what I know of. It makes it very difficult to play with other players. Usually Bon Polska is played perhaps solo or usually duo. And if you see one of those duos of old people who play Bon Polska or some young as well, who are very, very good, you can see that their bows, usually it's two fiddles or two nickel harpas or one fiddle and one nickel harpa, you can see that their bows are just moving exactly at the same time. Like they are doing the same bowings and moving it exactly at the same time. And to achieve this unity in the sound, if you play with someone else, you should not just play at the same time as the other person, but you should watch them closely and like bind your movements together, both of you. So it's a big exercise for your like connection with another person, which can be extremely nice if you like to play with um, spiel kompis, little bit of Swedish, spiel kompis, playing friend. Spiel play, kompis, friend, buddy. Enough talking, let's get into some exercises for playing Bon Polska. So, what is very important is to have a very heavy beat all the time. So you want a big energy. Every beat is a huge energy curve, if you want. Woo! 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 See what I mean? So for example... Not something like, not... string you have to see this curve on your hand your bowing hand and then there is a bowing pattern that is quite common for Bon Polska and many other types of Polskas actually it's not always used in Bon Polska but it's like the basic stuff that you can use almost all the time it is down on the one up on the two and the three being down up like this <laughs> a bowed instrument player, it's the moment to untense your bow. I like to play with a very tensed bow, but for Bon Polska you need something quite loose. This is matching a bit the tradition of the old nickel harpa styles that had maybe one melody string and lots of drone strings. And you want to have drones all the time, you want to have chords and double stops and you want to take two, even three strings at once with your bow. So you need rosin and you need a kind of loose bow. Those old bows were very, very loose. So loosen your bow and go dig in your strings really, really much with quite a lot of rosin and a lot of wrist weight. I'm gonna take a chord because it sounds nicer. I'm taking E and C and my lowest C. You can take whichever chord you want, but on minimum three strings. And you're gonna play your pattern with like making the chord every beat. practice it very straight like this. Then you can try to practice it with short first beat. Here it's really clear. I'm making a very short first beat. What you're gonna try to do afterwards is to go somewhere in the middle between the straight second beat and the short 
first beat. So you can maybe play once, one, and then the other, for example. <laughs> Decide some structure, whichever type of structure you want, two times one, once the other, or the reverse, or whatever, how many times, and try to really have fun and to stick to your structure and to do it at will. When is it short first beat? When is it straight beats? And when is it some maybe a bit in between? If you don't manage to do something in between, what you can try to do is to start, for example, on straight and try to go slowly towards short first beat and reverse and at some point you're gonna be somewhere in between kinda so that's for the second beat but you can actually try to do that for the whole bar so moving around your especially two and three but also one sometimes <laughs> where you put your beats the whole bar is still gonna be the same length because otherwise your dancers are gonna have a problem basically and you can really extend and work around with that you can change chords sometimes just to feel how it is to concentrate on the left hand at the same time as on the right hand and so on and what you can also explore quite a lot is are you going to take just the three strings at once like this which is very strong and kind of aggressive or are you gonna play them a bit more like an arpeggio? Like this. You can also explore with that. So you have all those different parameters, like the tempo, where the beats are, is it more arpeggio or all at once, all strings at once, and you can explore in between all those possible parameters and try to decide, now I'm playing like this, with this and this and this parameter, and now I'm playing like that, with that and that and that parameter, and just play around that. And remember that the most important thing is to really stay a lot in your string. You need to hear the texture of your string, the texture of the rosin, of the bow. It needs to be like earthy. Really, it's a farmer's posca, right? It needs to be earthy. It's really important for, for bone posca. Um, usually the final tempo will be around 100 beats per minute. It varies a little bit, it can be in between 92 and 106, I would say, somewhere there. And also what you can practice is to play very small passages on very, very short bowing uh, length, basically, very fast. This is something you might already know if you play music from Dalana, especially around Cillian. There is this habit of playing <laughs> like those fast notes like this this is also the case quite a lot in Bon Polska in Bon Polska you're gonna have this it's a lot of like those long row that you let ring and then it's a lot of this contrast between the like the huge big stuff and the small little passages very fast so remember the faster you're playing the shorter the bow and when you want those big long notes on the contrary you can really give a lot of bow kind of but more weight than length of bow always 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 very heavy remember very 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 heavy Next video, I'm gonna actually give you a tune of Bon Polska. So for now, you can just practice those chords and have fun. And what I really suggest you do for practicing your Bon Polska is to listen to recordings or, if possible, videos of Bon Polska playing. Because Bon Polska is really the type of Polska, if there was only one, that you cannot write down. Well, Finskog's Polska as well, but doesn't matter you cannot write down this style on paper, it's impossible. So you can learn a melody from paper, but to get the style and the atmosphere, you cannot trust the paper. They can't write this down. So really listen to players, listen to, uh, I don't know, Josefina Polson, David Eriksson a bit, Tobian Nesbom, there are many, many more. As usual, just 
try to find Bone Polska playing on YouTube and check the Zorn medal people who got it from Upland playing and ask people about Bone Polska if you're interested really listen to a lot of it to also make your ear to this style that is very specific and very much suited for Nickel Harpa. Last little thing, if like me you are tuned in another way than the traditional Swedish tuning, which is C, G, C, A. You might have difficulties playing some of the traditional Bon Polska tunes. I am tuned like a viola C, G, D, A because I find it easier and sometimes there are some tunes where I cannot really play the drone as effectively as if I had a C there. So just be aware of that. I don't want to get into the debate about tuning. For me it just depends on what you're comfortable with and what you like to play. I don't play many Bon Polskas, so for me not having a C there is fine, but if you want to play a lot of Bon Polska, maybe it's a good idea to train with a C there if you don't have one already. Or here if you are tuned in D here, because I know some people in Germany actually are tuned D G C A. So the traditional Swedish tuning C G C A is your best friend for Bon Polska playing. I think that's all. We'll meet very soon for a Bon Polska tune. And up until then, have a lot of fun practicing your chords. Maybe do that when there is no one around because it might be very difficult to listen to. But I hope you will have a lot of pleasure playing it and have fun. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and if you would like to support a freelance musician and music teacher, as I am, you can do so on Patreon, link in the description. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you will have a very nice time, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, do!